Hi, this is the G3 Live Show featuring Cars with the Curves, and I'm getting your host. And I'm Shawnee, your co-host. And we are, where are we? We're on the driveway to the Hemi Hideouts. And it's back this way, and let's go see these collectible cars that John Hovis has. Yes, let's go. There's a lot of man caves across the United States, and this one is John Hovis man cave like you would not believe. It's called a Hemi Hideout, of course. Yes. Me and Galen are going to go inside and show you all the oohs and ahs. That everybody Let's go inside and check this Hemi Hideout out. Come on. Now, the oohs and ahs should start right about now. Take a look at all this. So I'm probably to introduce John Hovis, the owner. Hi. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're here in his, God, the ultimate man cave like you've never seen in your life. Take us, take us around here and show us what you've done with this place. Okay. All right. The building is basically uh, not quite three years old. Uh, the building is put together uh, with all of the oak dowels. It's called a scissor arch, the way it's constructed. We see the, the timbers go up and crisscross. It's 54 feet tall on top of the cupola, 41 feet tall in the, the clear story up here. All the signs came from all over the United States, so the collection is basically was put together in the last three years. Now, this is one big fuel pump right here. I mean, for what year is this? 1923. It's called a Greek column, and it's uh, highly sought after for collectors because of its natural beauty. That's tall. I mean, that's tall. <laughs> that's taller than Shauna. <laughs> so the way this would work is you would pump this thing up to zero, fill the glass cylinder all the way up, and then you would gravity flow down how much gas you wanted to purchase, and then you paid, shut the thing off and pay for the gas. Probably what? A couple cents a gallon? Uh, who knows? <laughs> I, it, it probably could be. Long time back there. Yeah. Let's take a walk around this way. And I, I see you've got a few motorcycles here. Yes, I, I rode a Triumph when I was in high school, so naturally I've got Triumphs here. And uh, these bikes here are, we have a 1978 Bonneville 750, a 1966 Bonneville 650, a 1964 TT flat track racer, also a 650 Bonneville. Well, at least he's got his eclectic view of cars and motorcycles and all. And uh, uh, we have 17 tractors total. Right now in here we have seven, uh, all date up to 1959, some of them as early as 1920. As you see, we're now we're walking around to some of the cars that John owns, and we're starting off with a Duster. That's right. This is a 1972 Duster 340. It's a numbers matching car. You got a 69 uh, Cornet RT convertible. They made 99 of them in 1969. That car originally came with a 444 barrel. It now has a 528 Hemi with a six pack setup. It's close to 700 horsepower. That's a lot of horsepower. Now, moving on here, we have 1937 Plymouth Business Coupe. Uh, it's uh, got a, a 1952 Hemi engine in it. Rather small, but it's supercharged. It's close to 800 horsepower as well. Now, I'm, I'm looking, you're, the reason why he's called a Hemi Hideout because he loves his Hemis. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. They were rare. There weren't a lot of Hemis around. Uh, they were relatively rare. You very rarely saw them. Now, moving on over here to your pink. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cuda. All right. Uh, Dodge called this color Panther Pink. Plymouth called it Moulin Rouge. Uh, in 1970, Dodge made five 446 pack pink on pink cars, RTs. That's it, total. Now, now moving around this way, now what, what made you decide to put a diner in here? Well, we had to have a flavor of the 1950s, and since that was my era, it had to go. It was a, a, an integral part of what we were trying to capture here, uh, the past. Yes. Those were my days. Exactly. Now, look at this diner right here. Come take a look. It's like it is a gorgeous diner set up for a lot of people sitting here. Absolutely. We can hold probably about 30 people in the diner. Right, and, it, and it, I tell you what, uh, look at the diner sign right here. You've got a great diner sign. It, I mean, lots of neon signs in here. We found the diner sign in McCordsville, Indiana, leaning up against an old barn, and uh, weeds growing out of it. You never know where you're going to find a treasure, so the diner sign was almost like a perfect fit for what we were putting yeah, together. Perfect. Yeah, a lot of fun. That's a, that's a big sign. 
Good gracious. All right, let's take a walk around and look at some of the signs here. It's like these signs come from what? All of the United States? Please. All over the United States, literally every corner. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Take a look here, and you'll see some of the signs. Um, some of them are neon signs. Some of them are not neon signs. And you can tell these are old signs. Absolutely. For instance, the Dodge Brothers sign uh, is milk glass. That was 1917. Dodge Brothers started in 1914. So that's an early, early, early Dodge sign right there. Oh, wow. Wow, wow. That is old. Old, old, old. Mm -hmm. I see Indian motorcycles, Conoco, Lion. One of the interesting things about the Indian motorcycle sign, they only made two porcelain signs total. So that was made by the first porcelain company in America, the Levy Company. Oh, my God. This is awesome. This is awesome. Now, I tell you what. Well, let's go look at some more Hemis. So I see you have some couches around here for everybody to hang out around. Well, uh, originally we built this uh, building to be a man cave, a guy thing, and Shelly Gates came along and was an integral part of what we were trying to do here at the barn, and uh, she brought the woman's touch and uh, youth to our project. So she made this lounge area and really kind of converted things to where it would be a unique event center not just a man cave. You even have the sign for Hemi Hideout. That's amazing. Was it custom made? It was custom made, and the reason there's a, an elephant with a motor on its back, they used to call the old Hemi engine the elephant. There's a big, fat uh, engine, and uh, so that's where we got the idea. We would put the elephant and the, the Hemi engine on there, and we came up with the Hemi Hideout name. Awesome. Thank you. Now that we're outside on the patio, John's got his own kitchen out here. Take a look. Come this way. He's got these uh, saddles here for you to sit on. That's an unusual seating that everybody sees and all. But the saddle, it all spins around. It's like, oh, yeehaw! <laughs> How many shots have you had today? Come this way, and you'll see this outside kitchen right here. It is gorgeous. I mean, this is the ultimate outside barbecue area, uh, grilling out here and all. Uh, beautiful kitchen now. And of course, neon sides, Coca Cola, ice cold Coca Cola. You know, I mean, this is really, really nice. You know, take a look. Now we have an outside area for everybody to spill out here and enjoy their time. Now, John, where does everybody park at? Well, we designed an area for the parking around the, the building. It's called Grass Creek, and it eliminates all the concrete. So you can park antique cars or whatever kind of cars you want to park and gather all around the building. And even on a rainy day, you can park a loaded 18-wheeler on it. Uh, it serves a great uh, surface without having all the concrete. So it, you keep the green effect. When we have parties or events here, the crowds can spill outside, enjoy nice weather, or our fireplace or the... Uh, sit around the, the fire there by the seating. Just enjoy the weather when the, when the weather allows. Now that we're inside, now you get to see a little bit more of the diner. Take a look right here. And uh, it seats quite a few people. And uh, that way you can sit here in comfort and eat. It's like John says, back from the 50s, what he likes and all. And now I tell you what, onward to some Hemi's. Okay, now we come to the first Hemi Cuda right here, and it, we're talking bright, bright green. Right. Okay, they call this color Sublime, and uh, it's a 1971 Hemi Cuda. It was born a 340 Cuda and been heavily uh, modified, so a Pro Street version. It's got a 528 all aluminum Hemi engine, 740 horsepower. It's been fully tubbed, uh, no rear back seat. It's all tire and get up and go. If you notice the uh, picture in the back, that was done by my friend Bill Seitz. That is a rendition of the CUDA from 1968 in Car and Driver magazine, but he put this 71 My CUDA in place of what was a 68 CUDA. Oh, that, that is so cool. I tell you what, I like bright lime green cars, and that's bright lime green. Now, your next car right here is a, uh, looks like a Roadrunner. That's right. Okay, this is a 1970 446 pack convertible Roadrunner. They only made 34 of them in 1970. So, fairly rare car. As a matter of fact, they only made one Hemi that year. So, the 446 packs and the Hemis were relatively rare. You saw them every now and then, but 
they were very uncommon. So this car was stolen and uh, it ditched in a river and spent 25 years in a river when it was rediscovered. When they pulled it out, uh, it was completely deteriorated, but they saved the numbers matching motor, transmission, axle, and VIN number, and it's been completely rebuilt. It is still a numbers matching car. They only painted two purple and white. Or plum crazy, as they call it. <laughs> hey, now, I've always liked the Super Bs right here and uh, another bright car, yellow. Indeed. They call this color banana. Again, another 446 pack, 1970 Super B. This is uh, very close to what I had when I was in high school. Same color and everything is what started it for me. Uh, they made 599 446 packs in 1970. The 70 Super B was considered the ugly duckling of all the Dodge and Plymouth muscle cars because of the B-wing grills. Very unpopular, but I loved it. I do, too. I this is the first I never knew it was B-Wing grill. Wow, I did not know that. That's unusual. And, all. and now we got a bright red car. All these cars are bright. They got bright colors. It's almost like M&M's. That's right. That, <laughs> I, I call it a bubble gum uh, building. You know, put, like putting bubble gum together. But this is Viper Red, a 1968 Charger RT. And it's been completely uh, resto modded. Uh, 605 cubic inch, all aluminum Hemi. Five-speed overdrive pistol grip shifter. It has uh, all the amenities you'd want in a modern-day car. The car was designed by a NASCAR team. They wanted to take a 68 Charger and build it as if it had been designed in 2012. Now, take, take a look inside here. This car has got uh, your racing harnesses to, uh, so you can buckle up. And, of course, you've got your pistol grip shifter. So you can sh now we're here with the Hemi Cuda. Tell me more about it, John. Okay, this is a 1971 uh, Hemi Cuda convertible. They only actually made 11 of them in 1971. This is not a real Hemi Cuda. It's been uh, rebuilt and, and as if it was an original. It has a 517 cubic inch Hemi uh, with a shaker hood. The shaker hood would vibrate when it stopped at a red light, so it was really cool to have a shaker hood in 1971. Now, how many horsepower does it get? This one's about 650. That's a lot of horsepower. <laughs> Indeed, plenty. Now that we're here with another Hemi car, another bright colored car, and this one is... Okay, this is a 1970 Hemi Super B. Uh, again, uh, the color is Go Mango. And uh, they made 32 Hemi Super Bs in 1970. There's only four known left in the Chrysler Registry that are true numbers matching originals. We have two of them here in the, in, in the building. They just both happen to be Go Mango, Orange, and Black. And so that makes them rare with the two of them here out of the four. That's right. You know, and uh, is this one automatic or four speed? Or? This is an automatic. Both of them happen to be automatic. So oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's right. This is a 1970 Hemi Cuda. It has the hockey puck stripe. Um, you might want to get that filmed in the back there. But anyway, this has a 472 Stroker Hemi, five-speed overdrive. This is a car we can take out and rock and roll. It's not a numbers match. Just have fun, right. car. Right, right, right. Yeah. Now, Shaker hood and all that stuff. Now, uh, as, you, as you see, uh, right here we have another. That I can tell this is a Roadrunner right here. And it's got... If you, as you notice, the hood is flat black paint right here compared to the rest of the car, and they did this kind of special, didn't they? They did indeed. This was for a, a NASCAR kickoff. Uh, this is a 1969 and a half, a mid-year uh, design for Roadrunner, 446 pack. Uh, it had a fiberglass liftoff hood in 1969. That was really cool to have something like that. You lift the whole hood off and work on the car really easy. Uh, Again, they're fairly common, and uh, they were a huge hit when they came out with a six-pack. They actually called uh, the uh, the Roadrunner a four, uh, uh, 446 barrel, and they called a Super B a six-pack. Very popular cars. Now, there's one car over here that I want to show everybody. It's a Belvedere. It's a Plymouth Bel Belvedere, and uh, when you order, when you this car came about, uh, what year is this? 66. 1966. This car was $2,990 straight. You add $714 to this, and you get a 426 Hemi engine. And man, 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 it's like, wow. And this one just happens to be a 426 Hemi right here. And it's like, uh, and it's got the four-speed inside. Red, here we go. 
Look how big that thing is. Is it uh, one big four barrel or two four barrels? Two four barrels. Two, oh, two four barrels. Uh, the 66 Belvedere 2 uh, looked to me looked like Granny's old car. It was kind of a sleeper, but uh, they made 284 that had Hemi. So quite a few of these, uh, and when you talk about the numbers for the Hemis, but you talk about a sleeper, this thing uh, looked like Granny's car until you put your foot to the floor. By the way, it's a numbers matching original. It only has 10,800 total miles on it. Okay, now that we are having a sit right now, and John's told us a lot about his cars. We haven't talked about all of them, but tell us a little bit how you get, even though you built your house on this property, and, you, and how it, did everything else get started? Okay, well, it really, uh, everything I've done in my life has been a little bit overboard uh, in my entire <laughs> life. So I started this thing off, I was going to build a, I wanted to build, when I retired at 55, I'm 63 right. now. Right. I, I wanted to build a car barn uh, to put the cars in where I get the cars in easy, right. get them in and out with no trouble. Right. Uh, I had three people helping me with the design of this thing, and it got a little bit out of hand. <laughs> so, you know, really uh, out of hand. we decided bigger, bigger, bigger. That's right. So we we decided we put a cupola in the center, and we built a barbecue pavilion and a water feature, and just kind of grew. So, really, I'm the first to admit this got out of hand. I'm so proud of it, and everyone that was involved with it is very proud of how this turned out. That's awesome. So it was a true team effort to put it together. Right. Now, Shelley was a big help in this because she was an interior decorator mm -hmm. of this whole place, and yes. she. She, she helps you out and runs this place to keep everything running smoothly. That's true. There were actually three very important people other than myself involved in this. There was Shelly Gates. She brought uh, the females' touch and youth to our project. Right. Made it an elegant uh, venue where it might have not have been so refined. <laughs> uh, and, I mean, she truly changed the uh, direction that we were going. Uh, Bill Seitz uh, was our uh, production supervisor right. here. He helped do the original design and helped get everything together together. Uh, a, a tremendous artist. Uh, you see his art technique all over the building. And a guy named Don Looney out of San Diego, California, right. helped with the landscape design and wow. helped us finish the building. Well, I understand uh, that you had to build the land up like five feet because there's a floodplain here. That's correct. We had to build up five feet. Uh, we are in a floodplain, but we're well out of it now. When we did that, that allowed us to do some really unique water features outside right. and uh, have a uh, a lot of waterfalls and things of that nature. So it really added to the design just by accident. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Now, since our viewers have seen this gorgeous man cave and all, have you, see, have you heard or seen any other man caves that can compare to your place around the United States or the world, that is? Well, I, I don't know. I've seen many very unique uh, man caves, if you will. I've seen one-car garages that were just absolutely, totally unique. And it seemed like each venue I've been into, they all have their own signature. They, yes. There's something special yes. about them. Yes. So uh, I'm very proud of what we've done here. But there's some very un unbelievable, just awesome man caves out there. So. Oh, I'm sure there is. So and may I ask? Sure. Uh, when did you get your first car? First I got Dodge? my first car I bought about 20 years ago. It was a yellow Super B. Mm -hmm. Then I bought uh, two other cars, the convertible Roadrunner and an orange Super B over here. Mm -hmm. And that was about uh, 10 years ago. And okay. then all the rest of them in the last six or seven years. Okay, wow. So all together you have how many? About 24, 24. cars now. Didn't have a single sign three years ago. So we've been really busy trying to put this thing together. Amazing. So do you, do you go around in an RV, or how do you go around the United States to hunt for all this? I, I go in a, in a, a one-ton pickup with a big car hauler, and we take off, and we'll go thousands of miles. We don't come back till the truck's loaded. <laughs> when it's loaded, we come home. <laughs> well, you better that's, be looking. Because... That's right. We might be gone three days, or we might be gone three weeks. Yeah. Just whatever it takes to uh, fill the trailer up, and then we head back home. Shauna... I think we've enjoyed our time here, haven't we? I have. I have. And, you know, we both have. So. And John has been a great host of the show, showing us his ultimate, ultimate man cave. Yes. And it's a huge events that he has here and all. And thank you so much, John. You're welcome. You enjoyed it. Thank you, John. Glad to have so you guys out. And here. You're welcome. And anytime uh, we invite anybody who wants to come out and visit, uh, they're free to look up Hemi Hideout on the Internet. All they have to do is call in advance and love to have them out. Great. Yes. And this is Cars with Curves signing out. See ya.